In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the fruitful virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation, grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we have been found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, this is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you kindly and give you peace so shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites, and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. 
so that you know are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed at what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things, reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Happy almost civil new year. Let's see. In about six hours. Now that of the church, the church's new year, the year of grace, that began over a month ago on the first Sunday of Advent. The church always leads the way. We're always ahead of, ahead of the curve. Now when we celebrate New Year, some people do it with parties or they commemorate the aftermath of a party by feeling hungover the next day. Some do it by watching football, the real kind. And some just chill out at home. They might even make resolutions. Yes, why not begin the new year with failure? But we Catholics begin with something in addition to this, something greater than it. We begin with the very best of things, the holy sacrifice of the Mass, that saving sacrifice of Christ, which is made present to us in the Mass. And this year, because we are on a Sunday, 
We remember also the resurrection of the Lord, because this is why we come together on the first day of the week to commemorate what happened so many years ago on that Easter morning when the tomb was empty, not because the body had been stolen, but because Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. We commemorate other things through the Mass this day. The first of which is the octave of Christmas. We used to have a lot of octaves in the church, octaves which were eight days which were treated as one day. And why eight days? The eight days of creation. Oh, Father, you must be confused. There are seven days of creation. There were until creation was restored in Christ on that first day of the week, the eighth day. So we have eight days of creation. On the calendar, there are now only two octaves. The octave of Christmas and the octave of Easter. Well, this is the eighth day of Christmas, the day on which we bring that octave day to an end. During these eight days, we reflect upon the incarnation of Christ. We reflect upon Emmanuel, the fact that in Christ, God is with us, and he became one like us in all things but sin, and entered into our lives on that wonderful day many centuries ago in Bethlehem of Judea, when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. It takes a long time to reflect upon what that means. It's so long that we don't even have just one feast day. We have eight that are treated as one. And then we have a whole season, the season of Christmas, on top of that, and then we do it year after year, because there's always something new to discover. God gives himself to us so that he can bring us to himself. This is also a commemoration of the circumcision of the Lord. It used to be called that, the Feast of the Circumcision makes some people uncomfortable. But it was a fundamental event of the Old Covenant, so much so that every male child born to a son or daughter of Abraham was circumcised, that the mark of the covenant was writ upon the flesh of that young man on the eighth day. And this is what happened to our Lord. On the eighth day, he was circumcised. And it was on that day that he was given his name, the name which had been foretold by the angels, Yehezhua, God saves, not just a name, but a job description. Now that reality of the Old Covenant has passed away and been replaced by a greater reality which writes the New Covenant not upon our flesh but upon our very being and not just of males but of females also. Because when we are baptized, we also receive a name, do we not? But more than a name the fountain of living water is set up within our souls and we are given the promise of eternal life. And today is also the solemnity of Mary, Mother of God. It is a holy day of obligation when it does not fall upon a Sunday. I'm so pleased that our good bishop, Bishop Solis, has stopped the practice of dispensing from that. Because what better way could we observe the new year than honoring the Mother of God? We honor the Blessed Virgin above every other saint. 
Why? Because of the fact that she is the mother of God, that she gave to our Lord his human nature so that he could save us from our sins, so that he could lift that nature above that even of the angels. The Blessed Virgin carried God himself within her womb for nine months. She is the Ark of the New Covenant. And she followed him ever after, the first and greatest of the saints. And she is a channel of grace, a channel of blessings for those who follow her son. So we celebrate all of these things. We are able to say Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let us pray that it is a year that is blessed and lived in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who hath spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our voices in prayer for the needs of the church and the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Oscar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, those who care for the sick, and all those affected by the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in Ukraine and Russia, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civil leaders will govern in accord with the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That fallen away and apostate Catholics will return to Christ's church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will be blessed with an increase in vocations to the religious life, diaconate, and priesthood we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our country and the safety of our military forces and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of all the faithful departed, especially Pope Benedict XVI and Linda Paoletti, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the joy of Christians at the birth of Christ may also be reflected in our willingness to welcome every child, even in difficult circumstances. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions that we add in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living Father, look with kindness upon these prayers which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of Donna Mirabelli. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble and pr prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the tr truth, and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. In all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, for they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior for this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, 
with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, as Almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation of the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Celia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with
Let us pray. <clears throat> we have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life. For we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, mother of your Son and mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. 
May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessing in abundance, and keep you safe from harm throughout the year. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity, with holy patience to the end. May he order your days and your deeds in his peace, grant your prayers in this and in every place, and lead you happily to eternal life. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. For an end to the drought, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.